you brought up low income affordable housing i'm going to mm-hmm. keep opening this can of worms for you keep opening <laughs> it i love talking about it so why is it that a majority of low income affordable housing proposals go through what is the structure in place what are these players that benefit from that and why these projects prefer to work mixed income uh-huh. housing well <laughs> So a, an interesting story. I uh, I don't know how I got invited, but I got invited. This was under the de Blasio administration. Um, mm-hmm. We had tried uh, quite valiantly to make a, um, and I talk about it in my book as well, um, you know, a mixed income housing, mixed use commercial yeah. development at this former juvenile detention facility in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'd been working at it for years, um, you know, with a, probably the more the most diverse team New York City had ever seen more women more people of color led firms and you know two white male firms led firms as well um because we were really diverse and we value diversity there you go but um it was so fascinating because i got invited to this thing and just like talked about you know how you know so much affordable the continuation of affordable housing of very highly subsidized affordable housing federally subsidized affordable housing, which developers do because there's a nice big developer fee associated with it. And that's why they do it. It's not like this altruistic thing. And it's, it's, it's very much a well-oiled machine that's done by, you know, like a certain segment, you know, of the, of the industry and they keep doing it. And it's not a big group. It really isn't. Um, but, and they keep doing it and they keep doing it in the same exact places where poverty is concentrated, even though we know that the concentration of poverty continues to exacerbate poor health outcomes, educational attainment, you name it, all of those things. And so I asked the, the mayor, why do, does his administration keep doing that? <laughs> and, and he was just like, oh, you know, and to his credit, you know, he actually acknowledged that that was the case. And I was just like, good. And then on, on the side, he said to me, so, um, you know, listen, I've got people who, you know, interestingly enough, two, two different segments of our, of, of the population who never agree on anything, which, but this time they do. And you've got, you know, housing activists who want nothing but affordable housing to be built. And then there's also the, the real estate developers who know exactly how to build it and want to build it because it's so profitable. And, you know, and he said, well, you're the, the, like, I need to hear more from people like you, you know, who are actually talking about mixed income. And I was like, well, yeah, actually your administration just, you know, um, <laughs> picked another proposal over ours, um, <laughs> that actually provided home ownership, <laughs> you know, and supportive housing and all these things that you say we should have had in this proposal, but yet yeah, your administration did that. And, and he was just like, you know, I don't know what he knew, but it was just really kind of pathetic. And, um, yeah, it was just a really, well, this, this is, this is weird because they don't have, I like these little columns, but I don't see how, where they fit, but anyway, I'll find it. Um, <laughs> and so it, so really is about the continued, like the subsidies are used because, you know, again, it's not that it's super easy, but the folks that know how to do it will do it and use it because it's a, you know, it's a pretty profitable game for them. So they do it and it doesn't matter where they get concentrated. Like they're not putting their families in these places. So what do they care? Um, and, uh, ultimately, you know, and again, if folks, if people, if like the, the activists on the ground, you know, are responding, you know, to a need for housing, I'm not saying that they're not, but I also think that the continuation of literally concentrating poverty, we know how it ends. It, well, first of all, it doesn't end. It exacerbates the continued, you know, uptick in, in all of the, the, the social issues that we say we want to get rid of. But it, and so, and we know that economically uh, diverse communities where folks are literally being the example for others in their neighborhood to show what's possible um, so that you don't think that the only thing you can be, you know, is, um, you know, is, are the kind of things that you either on welfare or something like that, where it's just sort of like, no, you need to be able to see, like, if you don't see it, you won't, you won't believe it. If you, so if you don't get a chance to see folks actually behaving um, and being, you know, the kind of like aspirational things that sometimes you dream of being, it'll be harder for those, for people to see that. And I think there's even studies out there that show that the, if people have, don't have an opportunity to see what's possible, they just don't even, it's not, it doesn't even register. Which like, we're not that creative, and yes, <laughs> um, actually, we definitely are really creative. But again, it's like the 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 idea of possibility has to be something so that we can sort of like just have a little bit of inkling, you know, to yeah. see things change. 
that's what it is.